If you have a sport bike, or really any bike that requires you to constantly break the speed limit to keep it cool and live in a region where it's usually above 20 degrees Celsius, you're probably used to hearing this sound. That's the sound of your radiator fan coming on, in an attempt to keep the air flowing through it without breaking the speed limit. It's also a pretty disheartening sound. That sounds like you're slowly killing your bike. I'm sorry, I'll cool you down right now. It's currently winter here in the southern hemisphere where I live. And yet I still struggle to keep the fans from coming on while riding through town at low speeds. Coupled with far too many traffic lights to stop at, where neither my bike or I get enough wind to keep our temperatures down. And that's where these few tips and tricks come in that can be implemented on a daily basis to stop your bike's hot flushes from endangering its health. Unfortunately, these are not the solutions to all your problems, but should definitely help lower the temperatures on average and keep your fan runtime to a minimum. Keep the revs down. This contradicts the number one motorcycle riding rule of keeping it in the power. When trying to keep your bike's temperatures down, keeping the revs as low as possible will generate the least heat. The higher the engine revs per minute, the more explosions are taking place and ultimately creating more heat. So by limiting the number of explosions per minute while riding in slow moving traffic, you can keep the engine running cooler for that bit longer. Keep moving. A radiator requires air to be flowing through its fins in order for it to get rid of the heat within it which means the faster you travel, the cooler it will get. So your main objective when riding through traffic or town should be to keep moving. However, traffic lights are 100% against this approach and seem to enjoy making little motorcycles sit for long periods of time without fresh air. But there is a sweet spot where you can still be rolling fast enough to get a bit of airflow but not so fast that you'll get to the traffic light ages before it changes to green, forcing you to stand still and accumulate heat. That sweet spot speed differs from bike to bike, but with some experimentation and learning the hard way, you'll find your bike's perfect heat ditching speed. Kill it at red lights. The nature of road rules dictates that you will inevitably have to stop at a red light at some point or another, even after trying to approach them as slowly as possible while still moving. The best thing to do in this situation, when you know your bike is approaching dangerous temperatures, is to simply kill the engine. By stopping the engine from producing more heat while stationary, even if it's just for a few seconds, can make a big difference in your journey. This is easiest at light where you already know the sequence because you can have it back on just in time for the green light. And while the bike's sitting there with the engine stopped and the ignition still on, the fans can come on and start to cool the radiator. So when you start the bike back up again and the coolant begins to pump, you will see a decent drop in temperatures to ease your worries. Coolant check. Probably the most obvious thing to check if your bike is overheating, but is still worth mentioning, is your coolant. Ensuring your radiator and coolant reservoir are filled and that there is no air in the system is always a good thing to check. These days, there are also lots of good products to put in your radiator, claiming that they will keep your engine cooler than the trusted 50-50 water to coolant ratio will. I'll link a few options in the description that are worth trying, because after all, every degree counts. On their own, none of these tips and tricks will make as much of a difference as a cooler climate would. But since we can't control the weather, doing all of these together should add up to make a sizable difference and hopefully make your hot journeys a little less stressful.
But anyway, hit the like button if this video helped you out. Subscribe for future motorcycle tips, tricks, hacks, bodges and rides. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next ride.